We'll be paying our second visit of the morning to open air in just over five minutes after the news now from Lisa Davidson. From the newsroom, the main story is at 11 o'clock. Shares have steadied on the London Stock Exchange after a sharp drop at the start of trading this morning. The 100 share index opened down 157 points after Friday's collapse on Wall Street led to overnight falls in the Far East. However, the index has recovered slightly to stand at just under 2,100 points. The slump has put renewed pressure on the pound, which is down by almost three pfennigs against the German mark. The London dealers arrived at work this morning knowing that the Tokyo stock market had fallen overnight by under 2%, less than feared. But at first, the city appeared to be in another Black Monday mood. Long before the official opening, share prices were suffering big falls, with analysts calculating that the 100 share index was down by as much as 180 points. Shares in companies that had been thought takeover targets were worst hit. But by 9 o'clock, there'd been a modest recovery with some buying of shares now considered bargains. Now an uneasy calm appears to have settled on the London market as it waits for the opening of Wall Street at 2.30 this afternoon. If New York prices continue downwards after Friday's slump, London shares are bound to follow. The Social and Liberal Democrats have chosen a new short name. In future, they'll be known as the Liberal Democrats. Members of the party voted for the change by a margin of 70%, though fewer than half the party members took part in the ballot. Many former Liberals in the party were unhappy to be known simply as Democrats. The Health Secretary, Kenneth Clark, will today take the first legal step in imposing a new contract on doctors, who overwhelmingly voted against the move. Mr. Clark will lay the regulations before Parliament, giving MPs a chance to debate the issue. The government has launched what it says is the biggest childcare initiative since the Second World War. The Department of Education has written to 13,000 schools in England, asking them to stay open in the evenings and during holidays. The idea is to encourage mothers to go back to work and stop their children becoming latchkey kids. It's estimated the falling birth rate will create a shortfall of around a million workers by the mid-90s. The government hopes the new schemes will encourage women back to the workplace. I do think it is going to plug a gap which has existed in our society for a very long time and which has made it quite difficult for women who otherwise would like to take full-time work to accept that full-time work because they wanted to prevent, quite naturally, their children from being latchkey children. The government says school buildings are ideal for such schemes. The independent child carers would be approved by school governors. Teachers would not be involved. But child care groups still have their reservations. That's all for now. There's more news at midday. Good morning to you. We'll ask any Spaniard whether he'd go to the Costa Brava at this time of the year for his holidays. And he'd probably say, que, or I'm from Barcelona, or not likely, or the equivalent in Spanish. Because at this time of the year, October, November, it is particularly unsettled. These strong winds coming in from the east bringing some very wet conditions along. And that's been the case right throughout the weekend. Now, on the satellite picture this morning, we can pick out that area of bad weather still down there over Iberia. But as you move north into central Europe, things do cheer up quite a bit as you run into an area of high pressure, which really is going to be resident for quite a few days to come this week. Further north, across the British Isles into southern Scandinavia, you can see those sets of fronts and that means to say rather disturbed, windy, wet weather for much of the next few days. Well, down there in southern Spain over the past three days, you can see it's been particularly wet and stormy, and the rainfall's been totalling as much as 98 millimetres, for instance, just across the Straits of Gibraltar in northwest Morocco, as high a rainfall as 73 millimetres, almost three inches, over at Faro, down in the Algarve. Well, things today are particularly unsettled once again. Still some storms around. There's been a storm this morning in Ibiza, and there will be further storms cropping up during the day with some very windy weather coming in from the east. As you move eastwards through the central basin of the Mediterranean towards Italy, things are pretty good, lots of sunshine around. That's the way it's going to stay all day. And plenty of sunshine as you go through much of France up into central parts of Europe and off towards the Soviet Union. Many places staying dry and bright today. A lot of sunshine still to come. But it has been very unsettled through the Black Sea down into Turkey and Greece of late. And still some fairly heavy showers around there for the next day or two, those showers continuing to feed across into Cyprus. Very cold over Scandinavia too, some uh, rather wintry showers continuing up there, rather windy weather as well. But sandwiched in between, that includes much of northern Britain, across into southern Norway and Sweden, 
into Denmark and the north of Poland. Well, it's a very cloudy morning, some outbreaks of rain about, and it's been snowing quite heavily, incidentally, over in Oslo. Now, I think you'll find the first band of rain continuing to feed eastwards as the day has gone along. And you'll find some brighter weather coming in behind, but more rain turning up in the northwest of Britain later on this afternoon. Those are the temperatures over Scandinavia. You can see very low indeed, only about 6 degrees on average. That's just 43 degrees Fahrenheit. Quite a chill wind blowing there. In many central areas of Europe, well, 14 to 16. No great shakes, really, even for this stage of October. The highest temperatures, that depends on whether you get the storms or not, down in Spain, about 25 degrees there. That's 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that's it from me. I'll be back at midday. And what are we serving up for lunch? Well, there's... Nothing in the world will ever be. What's the point in being a celeb, you know, mm. I mean, there's only so many jacuzzis you can buy. We'll be meeting the people behind the news. They had called in the guardian angels to help prevent an illegal you eviction. To put a but why were we so stupid for so long? Absolutely amazing. All out of the license fee, too. Now for our second rendezvous with Eamon Holmes, Gloria Hunniford and Jane Irving, tackling controversial and topical issues in a new series of Open Air. Very good morning to you. I'm Eamon Holmes. This, of course, is Open Air, and we have a brand new look and a terrific new team. The phone number, though, it stays the same, so we're waiting for your calls. Do give us a ring. 061 if you're not outside Manchester, 814, only 804, 24, nearly forgot it there. You can tell it's the start of a new series. And only too glad to speak to you this morning will be my new partners, who you may have seen in the early edition, Gloria Honeyford and Jane Irving. Hi, what do you think of it so far? Morning, Eamon. I must say, it's been terrific watching all the telephone calls coming in. I spend half my life on the phone anyway, yeah. so it's <laughs> wonderful to work with phones. It's great. And it's brilliant that you can actually join in our conversation. It's wonderful. Yeah, the thing is, Gloria, you're supposed to take the calls, not make them. <laughs> make that clear, okay? At your expense, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the other thing, we've got a reporter right in the road. He is the roving Roy Shepherd. Let's see where he is today. Hi, Roy. Hi. Well, earlier on, I was being... Uh, taken through my paces with Lizzie Webb, but I've come inside now, I've had the body sorted out, I'm going to have uh, the rest of me sorted out a little bit later on in the program today, but I'm going to be travelling around the country, I could be in your area, I could be in your street, I could be in your town, and in the forthcoming weeks and months, hopefully you'll be able to come along and take part in open air by being on television as well, so we look forward to that. I'll be back here in this Mansway department a little bit later on, join me then. We oh, looks well, doesn't he? We'll be catching up with Roy uh, later this morning. But first, let's see what's coming up in today's open air. In a moment, we find out what's had you turning on and switching off. At ten past eleven, glamorous actress Kate Amara tells me how television has shaped her own very special style. And how do you create an image? Royal dresser David Emmanuel reveals all. And we ask, should gay couples in Britain be given a license to marry? Joan Bakewell joins us at 11.25 to discuss that issue which was raised in last night's Heart of the Matter on BBC One. Then at 20 minutes to 12, you can challenge the News of the World's television critic Charles Catchpole in our regular viewer's verdict spot. And at a quarter to 12, Gary Glitter reveals how he used television to launch his own unique image. So that then the lineup for open air today. But first, the calls that have been coming in so far, and you won't be surprised to hear that uh, last night's Heart of the Matter sparked a strong response. We are discussing it today, but first let's listen to some of your comments. I thought the Heart of the Matter program was excellent. Um...